Thank you for coming. I think I should stand on the other side. All right. Uh, if you know me, you know I don't like podiums because I'm only 16 inches tall and it feels like I'm disembodied when I'm behind a podium. So I'm not going to use the podium, but uh, anyone is welcome. Obviously, the readers, you're welcome to use the podium. Uh, you're probably taller than me. Uh, welcome to uh, Splat Presents number two. Um, tonight's cast will be Jason Kirk. Julia Claire Tillinghouse and Brent Armendinger. And they put work in the back that you can buy or take, depending on whose work it is. I think Jason put some sheets back there that you can just take and yes. stuff, right? Yeah. And then Julia has some chapbooks for sale, and Brent has some of his books for sale. So just keep an eye on those. If you hear any poems that you really like and you're super stoked about, go buy their books <laughs> and give them some money. Um, that said, uh, we have another Splab Presents, which will be our third one coming up at the end of April, featuring Dee Wolf and Jean Morel, who's here right now. Jean, are you here? There she is over there, so she'll be up at the end of April. Uh, and I also want to take this opportunity to mention the Cascadia Poetry Festival happening in Nanaimo. Uh, in Canada, right, on the island. So uh, check that out. You can find the information for that at splab.org. Um, and it's actually like super cheap. I think it's 25 bucks for a pass for the whole event. So what? it's a really good deal. And uh, you should definitely think about going. It's a pretty sweet clipper trip. And sometimes when it's really choppy, they give you anti nausea medicine, <laughs> as I now realize. Uh, also, I want to take this opportunity to thank, thank uh, Alex, our bartender for the night. Uh, please treat him well and tip him well. Uh, thank you. Okay. So, let me introduce our first reader, uh, which is going to be Jason Kirk. Uh, one thing I wanted to say about this particular set of people that I curated tonight is I know all of these people, or rather, I met all of these people in Michigan when I was there. I was there for only three years, but I came across some pretty special people, and so I'm pretty excited to get them all in the same room uh, reading today. Uh, all right. Jason and I go way, way back. Uh, Jason was one of my first friends that I met in Michigan, in fact. Uh, and I would say that I first met him through his poems. Now, I was sitting in a room full of ordinary narrative poems, and his poems stood out as linguistically and sonically playful. And of course, I immediately developed what we like to call a poet crush. What I liked the most about his poems is that they exhibited a kind of sonic tactility from word to word, and a sense of sound and play that pushes the mouth and the tongue to the limits of what we think language is supposed to do. And lines such as, a fabulous purple on cone deficient retinal windows of opportunity and our fingertips sprout gustatory pores and we inebriate all of the girth. <laughs> Trip me up just enough to slow me down so that I actually see and hear each word. And it's kind of like rocky terrain sometimes if you're like scrambling over. Um, but it always comes together in this really beautiful, holistic way and an incredibly playful way, which is something I always appreciate about Jason's work, and so I hope you guys will appreciate it as well. New logistics. I, too, found my G spot at 17. 100 hours on the day of Arturo III's funeral. Much maximized that afternoon, but for me, of course, no turds indulgence. Mm -hmm. As a rule, humans' improvements improved upon prove no less insatiate, diehard love, lust, but the blessing of strength and not power, and jaundiced fluids, but no new stool. Arturo III, I too miss most, is 
the vitreous humor he graciously gave me about right between the eyes. One digitized. Ergo, as my accreting database size repeats not, repeats not, it ages not. If, then, subroutine angst plays shady battery to some shrew tamed lady chattering, grave will be the undifferentiated animated days of sliver vision. Hydrocarbon savages, unamply ever savored I2's layers, kept on snagging their attention on los ojos. Ravishing lookers, he assigned them. The orb ladies. The blue balls, which delirious <laughs> stereoscopic take on our own ever-recording inner monosoliloquy doesn't an unwell-adjusted ego bot necessarily make and model. By the way, baby, I2's G-spot be capacious child, and whimsical anyway. Arturo II came alone to your sparse services, too, last June. He don't look, the second loved, too blue. Five mean boxes, only, 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 boy, but I too almost blew my tune. This little liver's tonic tickings slowing, dear. Dot, dot, dot. Which must mean pox of you and gone tell it more or less more than so far does my joystick and its brand new spanking cartography of the moving target equals, in binary I, Arturo third, I two, loop this video for you, and thus double you, tromping the ground like a foregone Gorgon, far gone, computer new. <laughs> Thanks for that uh, really awesome introduction, Nadine. That made me feel great. Um, and I return the crush. <laughs> uh, everything I'm reading tonight, uh, I'm reading some of three poems tonight. Um, these are all from a collection in progress called Women in Wheelchairs. Uh, the next poem is going to make Nadine cringe because it's a narrative poem. <laughs> uh, however, <laughs> uh, <clears throat> however, perhaps I can redeem myself because it takes place in Southern California. <laughs> the Guardian from the Sea. Uh, these will be three excerpts. The cast, Meredith, a mermaid, and Ozzy, her boyfriend. <laughs> Scene, Southern California, the future. Section two. There was magic about, and we all agreed, or didn't think about it. Businesses existed. Right angles began and ended sentences. Stanley, they said to it when the new house board asked. A real convenience to email the ambassador home about. Long and plural ways to get from the cradle to the ice machine. Yes, but only grief for Meredith to have had a diplomat instead of an escape artist for a mother. Drivers with immunity hanging from the accelerator pedal, hurling into the symbolic carport of her youth. No comfort, but in the hours between 
when Spanish steel workers break to nap, and when the combustion engine in the pipe dream rises over the deepest part of the ocean. The ground moved. Water kept flowing about the places it had flown earlier. The air would not shut up and sit still until spoken to, like grandmother did in her day, the way her father taught all of them. As for entertainment, Meredith crouched into porn, <laughs> even traded her glass bangles in for a mermaid banshees on motorbikes flick. Helpful chemical flowers painted in blatant colors by kindergarten paws possessed of siesta inscriptions. Excellent plans. Excellent people. Garden variety. Furniture danced the motion locution. The fertile and the barren were astir. And no one asked any ludicrous questions. Each of her crescent wrists tensed. Each of them did not let go. Section 11. Ozzy's tank top read, life's too short to fall in love with thankless women. He'd eat ice cream dogs, and his hard line figure only pulled more talk. Like a fork, he hurled javelin filth at holy rollerbladers. May your higher power seethe up a rope! Jesus, 86, the urges in his balls, you believe that? <laughs> Meredith blushed like cloud-swept coral. The boardwalk was a hot, brown, hurricane gauntlet under barometric brooding. Ozzy wheeled her to a stop, so sudden she tossed nearly out of her aluminum pulse clutches. Sudden, Meredith landed both feet Flat to the boards, 100,000 dendrites fired at once. Pain crossfaded into the instamatic memory of legs she had, never had. Check out these fishnets, Meredith, Ozzy squawked. A visual world lurched. Her head fell forward, some of her seeing, almost seeing legs. The rest, only a flutter of racks and baseball hat-shaped hats with writing gone. To each, her narcoleptic heyday. Oh, puffed and stood there waiting, eyeing other women, reading merchandise for something to say to strangers later on. Some loved differently. Some upshoot takers and others no back access passers. He licked his pallid lips as Meredith came to. He licked until he saw she saw. Section 13, this is the last of this poem. <clears throat> Epilogue a rhythmic ever after possibilities flood. Meredith's brain spaces. This is freedom too. Broken glass, chew, alchematic husband. Her face ready to be garden again. Obsidian cut of unlit bone resolve. Lava rock, chalk, scribble, jigging under the sea green over chalcedony luster her eyes, and a future that never slams shut into one's face, but once. Ozzy's interactive bank of murderous declensions. He must have wanted her dead, the stop-action blossoms 
he planted in only the already weak departments in her head. The reinforced smart beam scaffold from her underwater life, her lost night, her element, she kept a secret ballast. Everywhere she golden glared at the world with many wing necessary motion of all matter to an absolute deep freeze near Kelvin Zero. God was the imperfection of bride. Love smears of an unreachable inside, all other than before, for Finn like a bird. Uh, just one more, and then as Nadine said, uh, I have uh, sack sheets back there with 36 poems on them. Help yourself, they are the stuff that Nadine asked me not to read tonight. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that haikus? Yeah. Is that haikus? <laughs> I didn't ask you not to read it, I just said read some additional things. <laughs> I appreciate you reading it because it forced me out of that uh, rut I've been in for a little bit. Not a rut, just a, yeah, I appreciate you reading it. <laughs> uh, this is one section from uh, a nine part poem uh, that was recently accepted as, a, well, six months ago was accepted as a chapbook by a press that then proceeded never to return my emails. Oh. So, so even when they do uh, design it, it'll be a custom design and it'll be <laughs> hand manufactured and sold on Etsy, but um, that's assuming they're not all gone. I don't know where they went, <laughs> the two editors of this place. Anyway, uh, someone like this for a second. It's, the uh, it's called A Fabulous Hag in Purple on the Moor. In nightshade, she lingered. Fabulous purple on cone deficient retinal windows of opportunity as we mouth sexes. As the blood root stiffens, winter can't touch this. But what cannot succumb to touch will never pollinate come the day our fingertips sprout gustatory pores and we inebriate on the girth of air and expires. Buds like grails, hands like Buddha. But the nose has an innocent vision too of its lost host body. If to be innocent is to be the last of a city of deliquescent superior constrictors. This began as a stack strips of oral muscle movements, describing other oral muscle movements for some lover. Then, exactly, it re-became a banquet, at once for which the feast alone has placards with its many names, each contracted, all gone. Thank you.